Go. A lot of it is just buying from the kids. You know, the reality is we have a lot of kids out here that were in the weight room 130 to 140 times in the off season. And the reality is there's no shortcuts. It's just a lot of hard work, you know, to rebuild a football program. From the outside looking in, it would be hard to see how we do, but from being here all off season, seeing what coach has done to us, you know, um, I mean, we all expected this coming. A lot of that record can be attributed to the explosive offense led by Dallas Souser and Jalen Luth. This QB receiver tandem leads 5A in passing touchdowns, yards, and receiving touchdowns and yards. We thought they probably had a chance to be pretty, pretty special when the season rolled around. And, you know, the reality is uh, we haven't found anybody yet who can cover Jalen one on one. And Dallas does a really nice job putting the ball in spots where only Jalen can catch it. There's some guys who can give me a run for my money, but, you know, if you give me the ball, I'm coming down with it. You just know, I mean, you call certain plays for certain guys. So whenever we call, call play and, you know, you know it's going to Jalen, I know he's going to get open. And that's huge for a quarterback. Well, he'll give it to me even if I'm not looking open. He'll find a way to get it to me. Statistically, it's clear that the connection between Dallas and Jalen is one of the best in the whole state. But the relationship between Dallas and his dad, Brian, impacts the game in a whole different way. It's definitely a unique experience, which, I mean, obviously most kids don't experience. I think he started coaching me third grade when I started playing tackle football. He's been with me ever since. You know, even when Dallas was a little kid and we lived in Iowa City and I was a coach at Iowa City West, I mean, he is one of those kids, like two and three years old, like we're in the living room, you know, like just throwing balls nonstop as he would, you know, make diving catches into the couch. Go. Football doesn't stop after practice for this family. It's pretty unique that at home we can kind of just have casual conversations about the football team, knowing that, you know, we're going to go out there Friday and he's going to play quarterback for us. He knows, you know, because he's been with me my whole life, he knows what suits me well, what type of style we need to run an offense. And he's always adjusted that, you know, to fit my build and my skill set pretty well. From a young age, like, he was always very skilled with the ball. So, I mean, you know, we were like, okay, he's probably got a chance to, you know, maybe do something with this. And Dallas has done something with it, but Ames still has unfinished business. It really is a bittersweet season. You know, I, I can't believe this is the end of coaching both of my boys. You know, as, as excited as I am about watching Dallas play like every week, it, you get kind of a sick feeling a little bit knowing that the end is coming. We're in a good spot right now to make the playoffs, so I'm really excited to go through, I mean, that postseason where it's, you know, make it or break it time with them. It's going to come to a, an end at some point. You know, hopefully we win our last game. In Ames, Jake Brend. I'm able to walk away with, you know, some memories that most dads, uh, never get to have, and I'm extremely grateful that I've been able to experience this as a dad and a football coach. Local 5 Sports.